Hello guys, I Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today I bring you, after some time, I bring you... <sighs> what, what did I... Bleh. It's a video I wanted to do for a really long time and it is the DDR4 frequency on Ryzen 5 2600. And well, we already know that the first gen Ryzen's scale a lot with RAM frequency, but how about the second generation? That's why I'm making this video. So for this video I'm using a RAM kit that is not this one, is not this one, this one sucks. Anyway, it is a Crucial Ballistics Elite Edition which is a 2666 MHz CL70, CL70 and it can do up to 3000 MHz CL14, which is fucking amazing. And well, the RAM frequencies tested for this video are 2133 MHz CL15, 20, uh, 2400 MHz CL15 also, 2667 MHz CL16, 3000 MHz CL16 and 3000 MHz CL14. I know, okay, okay, I know that in the title I have 3200 MHz, but this kit can't reach it, so I'm trying to emulate the 32,000 MHz CL16 by using the 3,000 MHz uh, CL14. I know it is not the same thing, but it can give you an idea of what it is like. That's all. And well, that's all for today, guys. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe, and share the damn video. I'm still looking at these RAMs because they suck. They do suck. Anyway, share the video because that helps a lot, me and the channel. And let's now go to the part that is really important the benchmarks. See you soon. Our first game tested today is Far Cry 5, and as shown here, at 1080p the average FPS difference between 2133 MHz CL15 and 3000 MHz CL14 is not that much. It does make a difference, but nothing astonishing. At 1440p we start getting GPU bottlenecked, and we see that 2666 MHz is definitely the sweet spot. And going from 2666 MHz to 3000 MHz won't even be noticed in actual gameplay. Our second game is Rainbow Six Siege. Well, while on Far Cry 5 going above 2666 MHz made almost no difference, now we have the opposite case. Jumping from 2166 to 3000 MHz CL16 gave us around 7 more FPS on minimums and 5 more FPS on average. We can also see that this game is timing sensitive, since going from 2400 MHz CL15 to 2666 MHz CL16 made us increase our average FPS but reduced our minimum FPS, being it at 1080p, 1440p or even 4K. Hey! Cuidado, niños! The third game is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 
At 1440p and 4K, since we are kind of GPU bottlenecked, we can see almost no difference going from 2133 to 300MHz, but at 1080p we can see the differences. Still, not really relevant. From what we can see, I assume this game doesn't give a single fuck about latencies, since 3000MHz CL16 or CL14 won't get even one FPS difference. Now on Shadow of War. At 1080p we can see that having 2133 or having 2400 MHz kit will indeed reduce your FPS by a decent margin. The biggest difference is not on average FPS of course, but instead in the minimum FPS which will determine the smoothness of the gameplay. For example, going from 2400 to 3000MHz CL15 gave us almost 10 FPS more in the 1% lows and around 7 FPS more on average. But well, if you are using a mid-end GPU like RX 580 or a GTX 1060, you won't notice the difference, even at 1080p. Now we have CSGO, a game that heavily relies on CPU. We can now see that anything above 2133 MHz will be good. At 1080p going from 2133 to 2400 MHz gave us a boost of 20 FPS on average. The same difference happened when going from 2666 to 3000 MHz CL16. Basically, going from 2133 CL15 to 3000 MHz CL16 gave us a boost of 40 FPS. If you are a CSGO player or an FPS freak, let's say it, pick a 2666 MHz kit and try to overclock it to 3000 MHz or more. And if you have the money, well, just pick the higher frequency RAMs you can get. If you are not an FPS freak, well, you are already over 300 FPS on average. Downward strike. The last game tested today is another eSports title, Dota 2. This time I only tested at 1080p and 1440p since Dota 2 wasn't accepting the virtual super resolution. Well, this is another game with interesting results. Even with it being a gameplay and having a bigger margin of error due to that, of course, we can see that at 1080p every frequency jump is beneficial and that reducing latency from CL16 to CL14 also helps. At 1440p we see higher variations, but still, going from 2133 to 3000 MHz CL16 gave us a boost of 35 FPS, which in my opinion is huge. Let's now go to the conclusion. So guys, return us apart the conclusion. What do you think about the RAM speed frequency difference? So it does make a difference indeed, it does make a difference. But after the 2666 MHz RAM, the difference is quite minimal in most cases, even using my Vega 56, I was expecting more. I seriously was expecting more. For example, when we go back to APUs where the RAM frequency uh, do matters a lot and for example on the first generation where the, um, the the RAM speed frequency really really matters a lot there are um, there is a bigger difference than on the second generation from what I can see but still it is a good difference I think that uh, the sweet spot should be something like 2667 MHz or 2666 megahertz because from that uh, from that with that RAM with those RAMs if you have a kit, also 
gets always a kit. Don't buy single channel RAM. Watch this video if you want to see the difference. Uh, it is a quite old video, but it is not outdated at all. So my opinion is, um, if you get a cheap 26, 66 MHz kit, for example CL16, CL15, get it, buy it and overclock it. And you can have better performance at a lower price. But, but if you get at the same price, for example, um, 3000 MHz kit, go for the 3000 MHz kit and try to also overclock it or go further in frequency or uh, lower the latencies. That's my opinion and that's the, the opinion I give to you uh, for you to, um, to take it and use it when you think it is the right time. <laughs> One thing, if you like this video, check these videos because they are really, really cool. The links are all in the description. Check them because you will love them. Well, I also have to say that the next videos will be great. So, the next videos, for example, will have um, RX 570 versus the RX 480. I know it is old, but <laughs> that's me anyway. That's what I do. Uh, I'm doing a video of a build that cost me around, around 700, $750 with a Ryzen 7 and an RX 480. So stay tuned for it. It is a white and uh, white and black or black and white. Black and white sounds better. Black and white build. And I also have a build that cost me around um, four hundred and fifty dollars. So I'll have some some really cool videos of CPUs, builds, and GPUs. Stay tuned for it. If you don't, I'll cry. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hit like, subscribe and share the video if you can and see you in the next one. And oh, don't forget, leave a comment on the comment section. And one more time, thanks a lot. See you in the next video.